Hi, this is Sahana. This video is part of the series in which we learn how to build an application using ASP.NET Core MVC and Entity Framework Core. You will find playlist link in the description. You can watch all the related videos. In our today's session, we are going to learn how to set up repository pattern. Just a quick recap, in our previous session, we are done with setting up Entity Framework Core. Just to expand dependencies, you can verify that we have installed all the necessary NuGet packages. We have installed these two packages and we are done with the setup. You can watch the previous video. Repository pattern is a design pattern used to manage the separation of concerns between the data storage and retrieval logic and the rest of the application's business logic. In simple terms, repository pattern creates an abstraction layer between the data access layer and the business logic layer of an application. Let's take an example of our application. We are working on ASP.NET Core MVC application and we are building employee records management system. We have decided that SQL Server is going to be our database and we are going to store data in that database. Now, SQL Server is our data source. Now, if we want to interact with the database, we have to write SQL queries to interact with the database. To make the process more easier, we have decided we are going to use ORM, that is Entity Framework Code, so that we don't have to write SQL queries. We can write C-sharp queries to work with the database. Now, we have decided we want to implement repository pattern. With repository pattern, we implement an abstraction layer through which we talk to the database. Abstraction layer is a very general term. In specific, we create interface which will have all the data access operations. If we want to talk to the database, then we implement that interface and we use those operations. Let's first implement this pattern in our application. Later, we can discuss the advantages. Right click on the project, add new folder. Let's name it as repositories. There are several variations of repository pattern. We are going to implement specific repository pattern. This variation will have separate repositories for each entity type in the application. We have two entities, department and employee. So we are going to create separate repositories for department and employee. Right click on repositories, add. We are going to add new interface, name it as I employee repository add instead of class make it interface let's add one more interface I will name it as I department repository add this is going to be interface now I will add few methods to this to this I employee repository interface these are asynchronous methods let's add few methods to I department repository Again, these are asynchronous methods. As this is an interface, that there will not be method implementation. We have to create separate class that will implement this interface. Now we are going to add a class that will implement iEmployee repository. Add new class. I will name it as employee repository. This class is going to implement iEmployee repository. Press control dot, choose implement interface. Look at this add async method. This method is going to add employee data to the database asynchronously. That means this method will talk to the database. As we have entity framework core, this method will talk to entity framework core. In turn, entity framework core will talk to the database. That means we need an instance of AppDB context. Here we have data folder inside which we have AppDB context. Now we are going to get the instance of AppDB context. This is ASP.NET Core MVC application which has support for built-in dependency injection. Open program.cs file. Here you can notice we have already registered AppDB context with dependency injection container. Now, let's come back to employee repository. Let's add a constructor. Shortcut is type CTOR, double tap. I will declare a private field. I will modify this constructor to take app db context as parameter. Then I will assign this db context to this private field. Going forward, whenever we need an instance, we are going to use this one. This is constructor dependency injection. Whenever we create instance of employee repository, dependency injection container will get us the instance of app db context. Next, let's write code to implement these methods. 
You can copy this code from GitHub repository. You will find the link in the description. Let's repeat the same process and implement iDepartment repository. Add new class as department repository. Let's implement the interface. Now let's add a constructor. Let's implement constructor dependency injection. Let's implement these methods. With this, we have created repositories for department and employee. Our next step is to register these services or repositories dependency injection container. Again, go back to program.cs file. Here we have registered AppDB context. Same way, we are going to register iDepartment repository and iEmployee repository. Here with add scope method, we are registering iDepartment repository and here we are registering iEmployee repository. Let's understand this code snippet. This code registers the services with dependency injection container. This way, the dependency injection container manages the creation and lifetime of these services. And also, application can request the instances of these services without directly instantiating them. Here we are using builder.services. Builder.services is a collection of services that will be registered and managed by the dependency injection container. And we are using add scope method to register the service. Add scope method is used to register service. This method indicates that new instance of the service will be created for each HTTP request in the web application. Look at this. With this add scope method, first we have specified interface name. Next, we have specified the class that implements this interface. This means whenever you request Whenever you request iDepartment repository, dependency injection container will create instance of department repository and it will give you. The benefit of this approach is, in future, if you want to change the implementation, you can easily change the class here and you don't have to change the code that depends on this interface. We call this as loose coupling. We have successfully implemented repository pattern in our application. In our upcoming sessions, we are going to interact with these repositories. Repository pattern offers several benefits. Like, application becomes more maintainable and easier to understand as it acts as a bridge between the application code and data source. Repositories facilitate unit testing by allowing you to create mock implementations for testing the business logic without relying on the real data storage. And we can switch the data source easily without extensively modifying the application code. In our upcoming sessions, we are going to see how to use these repositories. That's it for today's session. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.